Imagine, you're currently playing through Ocarina of Time. You shot some paintings with a bow and arrow, played whack-a-mole with a dragon, and got some really, really heavy shoes. Now you just dive down to the bottom of a large lake, and you come face to face with the most infamous level in all video games. <sighs> no! God! <laughs> no! God, please, no! No! But, instead of screaming, WHY?! Ask yourself, why? Bloody brilliant writing there. Good morning gamers, my name is Zach Fanguy, and today we're gonna take a closer look at the dreaded water temple, and see if it's really as bad as everyone says. Let's be real, the Legend of Zelda series has some fantastically designed dungeons, from the Stone Tower, to Arbiter's Grounds, to the Ancient Cistern. When done right, they could be a fun, atmospheric brain teaser that on average takes about 30 minutes to an hour to complete. But there's one type of dungeon that everyone seems to agree Zelda gets wrong. Water dungeons. Yes, these levels are notorious amongst gamers as some of the worst design levels in video game history. But I would ask someone who sees these dungeons as the bane of their Zelda experience, why? Why do you feel that way? Why do you cringe at the thought of a water dungeon coming up? As I've said, it's almost unanimous that this particular themed temple is the worst part of the game. However, is that just people jumping on the bandwagon? In this video, I want to take a deep dive into the water temple and see why that is. <sighs> There's a lot more where that came from. We could discuss the Great Bay Temple and the Lake Bed Temple, but I don't want to tread those waters. Okay, that was just forced. First, we have to go back in time. It's the late 90s. Nintendo made history by bringing Mario and Zelda into a three-dimensional world. And to say the least, it was monumental. Super Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time defined what gaming was evolving into. Very similar to Jurassic Park paving the way for CGI back in the early 90s. Boy, my head being right all the time. These games were now the standard for 3D platform and adventure games. Traversing through a 3D environment without a fixed bird's eye view was a completely new idea that Nintendo had to tackle head on. And Ocarina of Time is a great example of experimenting the formula. If we look at, say, Link to the Past and Link's Awakening, and compare those dungeons with Ocarina of Times, bringing those ideas into the third dimension added a whole new perspective to the layout, the design, and the foundation. And you could say the same things to the players back in the day as well. Think about it, we were kids, 10 years old maybe, jumping from 2D to 3D environments. A whole new world. Of course kids are going to get frustrated and confused with this foreign concept. When it comes to the water temple, every time I play through it, I do get better and better. Now I more or less know what I'm doing. Unfortunately, I don't exactly remember my first time experience, but not too long ago, my wife played and beat Nocturne in Time for the first time, and it was interesting to see her experience tackling this God for a second dungeon. Needless to say, her reaction was predictable. This is bullshit. She, along with hundreds, if not thousands, of players, could not for the life of them navigate through this underwater labyrinth. By the way, she was playing the original N64 version, which doesn't have the extra camera angle that shows you the hidden passageway and doesn't have the toggle switch for the iron boots. She kept on getting lost, she couldn't find the right keys to the right doors, raising and lowering the water level for what seemed like a hundred times, and almost smashing the TV over the swimming controls. But here's the thing, she also got frustrated with the forest and fire temple. And like I said, this was her first time playing the game. Unlike me, who's played and conquered the water temple countless times. Just like the kids in the late 90s who are still playing the game today, we, to be blunt, are experts now. Smash that like button if you can get through this place without a guide. Now, just for the record, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the water temple is a great dungeon. Because it's not. However, I think people nowadays over-exaggerate how frustrating it is to navigate through this dungeon as a casual gamer. Let's swim up a different current. The positives. I think that most can agree that the water temple has some very very good music. In fact, I'd argue that all the water dungeons have great music. Just looking at the water temple, it 
provokes a mystery with nostalgia. A sort of foreboding comfort, if you will. Yeah, I'm using big words today. <laughs> the trickling of the chimes and the soothing melody of the flute give off an impressive atmosphere, only to be complemented by the design, the decoration in this place. It's more or less mesmerizing, a perfect combination that really plays up to the dungeon's strengths. Kicking off as soon as you enter the dungeon with an almost hypnotic track and beautiful decoration to accompany it, with a constant blue gaze everywhere you look. Only, to be fair, only to become more droning and exhausting by the time you reach the one hour mark. But, don't most dungeons do that? Doesn't the forest temple sound like it's laughing at you with its music? Doesn't that get annoying after a while? By the way, if you want to know more about the music used in these temples, I highly recommend checking out Save Data in their music analysis videos. They go as far as to dissect the background track for types of instruments used to any real world influences that could have inspired the design of these dungeons. Great stuff. Another positive in my book is actually the level design. I know. I just put myself in hot water by saying that. Bear with me on this. Try to view the Water Temple as its own game. Take Ganondorf and Hyrule and the Sages, chuck them all out the window. Put yourself in a mindset that you're playing an indie game. You start the game by entering this underwater maze, and the only way to beat said game is to master the labyrinth, defeat the boss, and gain the water medallion. I think that's the main issue people have with this dungeon. They see it as a means to an end. Just another obstacle that's in their way in order to get to Ganondorf. And I realize that's how Ocarina of Time works. It is a story after all. But I feel like you need to have that perception, that state of mind while swimming through this place. Nothing else matters. You start the game in a huge central room with many floors and many branching pathways. Very similar to Metroidvania game, wouldn't you say? Just like Metroid, there are many areas to explore and many pathways to tread. However, it depends if you have a certain item or not that allows you to progress down a certain path. And who doesn't love Super Metroid or Symphony of the Night? Imagine those games, but in a 3D environment. And yes, I know Metroid Prime's a thing. When are we gonna get Metroid Prime 4 anyway? Stay focused! Speaking of 3D, you could say another comparison is the original Resident Evil. Now when it comes to a 3D adventure game with tight corners and awkward camera angles and strong enemies, there is a sense of the fear of the unknown. What could be lurking around the corner? And it just so happens it's actually the very next dungeon after the Water Temple. But I'd say it works in the Water Temple's benefit, just like Resident Evil. The awkward camera angles, the tight corners, enemies that could just jump out of nowhere. <laughs> Certainly keeps you sharp between the ears. Or wet between the ears. And of course, we cannot forget about the best mid boss in the entire series. Now, I agree, Dark Link's placement here is a little bizarre. I mean, you would expect an aquatic themed monster creature of some kind, like Wart, or the Big Octo, or the Deku Toad. Open what, bitches? But I think one of the reasons why Dark Link's fight is so memorable is because of its placement in this dungeon. Think about it. It starts off in this room that seems to span on forever, and Link has a reflection in the water until he passes the tree and there's no reflection left. And I mean, if we learned anything from Mulan, I guess reflections mean a lot of things. Now, I'm not saying that Link's a Disney princess here, but you can't deny the obvious symbolism in this fight. To be honest with you guys, I look forward to this dungeon with every playthrough. And it's not just this game, Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess as well. Needless to say, Skyward Sword's Water Dungeon is the best dungeon in the game. But I wanna make this very, very clear. There are dungeons that just drive me crazy. The Fire Sanctuary from Skyward Sword and the Wind Temple from Wind Waker. You wanna talk about bad level design? There's your answer. I don't even want to talk about them. All in all, when it comes to the Water Temple in Ocarina, or any dungeon in Zelda, or any level in video games, period. Don't just jump on the bandwagon and agree with the masses. Form your own opinion. For the longest time, I agreed that the Water Temple was terrible, it was the worst, I hated it. But then, you know, I played it, I thought about it, and it's like, 
I actually kind of enjoy this place. And I don't care if it's controversial. Trust me, I'm part of the Zelda community. We're full of pitchforks and torches, but I'm sticking to my guns. I'm a Zelda nerd who likes the Water Temple. I'm a Sonic fan who likes some aspects of Sonic 06. Chaos Control! In fact, I would challenge you guys to leave in the comments below an unpopular controversial opinion of yours. Keep it clean, folks. And while you're at it, if you got a copy of Ocarina of Time lying around, go ahead and play through the Water Temple just one more time with a fresh new mind and come back to this video. Let me know what you think. I hope this video has some sort of ripple effect, if you know what I mean. I might do the same thing, so subscribe if you want to see that. I just might eat my words. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Good night, gamers.